The Colts quarterback room, it's quite obvious, but it's not who's going to start week one. It's big question. Is Anthony Richardson going to start week one? Is it going to be Gardner Minshew? Sam Ellinger, absolutely not. He's going to be that third quarterback on the roster that doesn't count against a quarterback spot because that's a new rule. Uh, but who's going to start week one? And really just talking about the quarterback room in general. That's what we're doing here today. And if you enjoy Colts football and NFL, make sure you like, subscribe, put the post notification bell on so you don't miss any future videos. So let's not waste too much time. Let's talk about the guy that is listed as the starter as of right now prior to training camp at the end of June. It's Gardner Minshew. Listen, I watched a little bit of film on him. First two games when we played with the Jaguars, and I watched a little bit of a Cowboys game with the um, versus the Eagles. There's good, there's bad, of course. He's a backup. He's not great. He's not perfect. So when I watched some of those earlier games, you know, he has a nice poise. He has some nice accuracy. It's not horrible. It's not, it's not elite. It's good. You know, he's that type of backup. He's cut. You know, I think he's a more flashy, shorter Jacoby Brissett. Honestly, you know, I think he has a great attitude. I love the way he acts. I love who he is. Minshew Mania, great nickname. I think he's going to provide a great atmosphere for Anthony Richardson to learn from. And just for the team around him, he's a great leader. When And I think he has a perfect balance. As announcers were said on one of the game. You know, when he's a backup, he knows the, you know, to tune it down. But when he's a starter, he takes role. It's his team. He's a man. He's a leader. And he's a great balance with that. Now, one of the things I did notice watching those first few games is his accuracy over the middle, especially when there's pressure coming up the middle and, you know, the middle out, I mean, you know, the middle of the offensive line is conjumbled. He struggles. He struggles with over the middle reads at times, it seemed. He's six foot one. He's not the tallest of quarterbacks, but, you know, I think throwing over the middle and seeing over the middle, unless the lane is completely cleared and just open, he is going to struggle, and he's not really going to see the field. In the Cowboys and Eagles game, I saw a few times where a check down was open, you know, right before halftime, you know, you still had a minute and a half, You're they were approaching midfield, you could have hit A.J. Brown on a little drag and possibly gotten the first out. Didn't hit him on that little route because I don't think he saw him. Yeah, he was moving around a little bit at the same time, but you got to keep your eyes upfield. Now, I think he would work best on a play action, rolling out, that kind of stuff. And that's where I think he excels in play action, rolling out. That's where he excels. And Shane Steichen, being from Philadelphia, having him here over Anthony Richardson, I think that's why Gardner Minshew is really listed as one right now because he's been with Shane Steichen. He knows what he knows Shane Steichen, knows what he wants to run, knows some of the terminology. He knows all that stuff. Anthony Richardson didn't know Jack Squat coming into this year. He has half of offseason. You know, a little more than than probably a half of, a, of an offseason. While Gardner Minshew has been in the Philly offense for about two and a half years now, right? Because he was with Philly for two years, I think. So he's been with them two and a half years. You know, you kind of got to think about it like, okay, Garner Minshew really knows his offense. Let's let him play while Anthony Ro- while Anthony Richardson gets to know the offense. Fair. Fair assessment. Honestly, I get it. Um, and Anthony Richardson's very raw as well. A lot of people are saying they think that Anthony Richardson needs to sit. I honestly think for how little he played in college, he's just going to need to play. But if he doesn't know the playbook, that's a little bit. I could understand that a little bit. I could understand that. So, Garner Minshew, being the start of week one, whatever, I'm okay, he's going to keep you in games, he's not going to win you games, he's not going to lose you games, exactly what I said and a lot of people have said about Jacoby Brissett, and that is a good backup, you know, he knows Shane Sykin, knows his system a little bit, Shane, and, Shane, and Shane Sykin knows his strengths, so I don't think I don't think it's a horrible, horrible look to start him week one, now, I know I've stated before, I would be very disappointed because Anthony Richardson, and I will be, you know, we all want to see Anthony Richardson, and I do, and, you know, I'm not really happy about it, but the truth is, you know, he knows the playbook and he knows the system a little bit. Anthony Richardson, I think he needs to, fo- I think he has been and needs to be, fo- you know, focusing on just improving his mechanics and that kind of stuff. You know, yeah, well, learning the playbook as well, but I think his main focus should be learning the game a little bit more since he's only started 13 times in college, 12 last year. So I think it's fair to have him as the backer for now. I hate it. I don't like it. But, you know, at the end of the day, when you think about it, it's, you know, honestly, probably the best thing for now. 
So Gardner Minshew, as we talked about him a little bit, he's a good backup. You know, he really struggles with with making reads over the over the middle of the field. He does fumble a lot. Uh, that's that's kind of an issue. You know, and he brings a kind of like a an attitude to the team that you love, that you absolutely love, and is a great atmosphere, great guy. I think he's a great mentor for Anthony Richardson, who we are getting into next. So as we all know, Anthony Richardson, we're not going to keep beating a dead horse. We've talked about him a lot, but I'm going to talk about him a little bit. So Anthony Richardson, it sounds like he's been making big progress. You know, a lot of, you know, a lot of the reports that come out, the head coach, Gardner Minshew has said that Anthony Richardson's looking good. He's making improvements. He's really impressing me. He, you know, what, whether it's Reich or Reich, Shane Steichen or Gardner Minshew, he, it seems like he's impressing them, which, you know, people in the team and the building are going to say that they're not going to come out and say, Oh, he's been playing horrible. You know, he's got a long way to go. No, they're not going to say that. They're going to keep you positive. They're going to keep you happy because the moment they say something like that, bomb goes off. Don't take that literally because I know how everything is now. It's just, wow. Like, you know, if you say something like that, it, you know, it spreads like a wildfire. It goes crazy. And people take it way out of context and just don't understand the situation, maybe as much as they should. But. Anthony Richardson, we know he's raw. We know he's been improving. He's been working with Gardner Minshew, Shane Steichen, and everyone in that offense. And you know he did some work in the offseason. He had a, you know, he has a great character. I say it every video. I talk about him or a player that has high ceiling, great character. Talent determines the floor. Character determines the ceiling. How good they want to be. How far they want to go. That's what character determines. Work ethic. He has a great work ethic. As um, I think it was Kenny Moore, Shaquille Leonard, no Pittman. It was Pittman. That makes more sense because he's on the offense. But Pittman said, you know, the man's always looking down on his playbook as you know as Rich Sheet, and he's like, man, come on, talk to me, sir. You know, talk to me for a second. Put that down. No, Richardson's been studying, and he and you could tell he's obsessed with the game, and that's a great sign for being. You know, it's. One great sign and one thing that I'm happy to see concerning how experienced he is, you know, that he wants to work. He wants to become the best. Now he's being paid big bucks. That probably helps it even more, honestly, you know. Being paid paid big bucks and, you know, it's something that you love. You're going to push. You're going to push very hard. So, um, Anthony Richardson, we all know I'm not going to keep beating a dead horse. I can talk about him too much. But then we're going to move on to the third stringer. Sam Ellinger, man out of Texas. A lot of people were really excited about this pick and they think they, that he should have been the starter and he should have got more time and you know they want to be optimistic and I do as well right now he is where he is he's not going to be two he's not going to be one unless there are some serious injuries he is staying at number three but he's not going to take up a roster stop because that, that third quarterback position for safety reasons you know just in case two of them get hurt you still got one you can keep him active, keep on your roster, but he's not taking up a roster spot. Nice. Now, do I agree with the rule all the way? I don't know. It's a weird rule. I think it's. I don't think it's bad. I don't think it's great. I think it's, you know, it's whatever. They're going to do what they want. But Sam Ellinger being a co coming out of Texas, sixth rounder. The moment he came in the room, you've seen the difference between between him and Jacob Eason. And you could tell that the staff's attitude and the press conferences toward him was completely different. Like, yeah, he loves football. He's a great football player, great experience, a great kid, great work ethic, great character. Jacob Eason, they talked about him a little differently. You know, like, yeah, you know, this kid was drafted in the, th in the fourth round. He's not going to be ready for a while. He's got to sit. Sam Miller was drafted in the sixth, and the talk was completely different. So... Sam Ellinger last year got a few starts. He looked like a third stringer, like a backup. You know, he's a great character. He's a great human being, but he's just not an NFL caliber quarterback. His arm strength isn't really it. Uh, it's not, you know, and I, I'm not just saying he's bad because of that. Quarterbacks turn out to be very good who don't, you know, at least solid arm strength. Some quarterbacks with, with some average arm strength, they find a way to be great quarterbacks. Drew Brees, he had a pretty good arm strength it wasn't great or elite he's still one of the best he's still one of the most prolific passers in NFL history so 
off topic there a little bit, but Sam Ellinger, he's just not really the guy. You know, he's a backup. He's gonna step in in a pinch if you need him. And I love him. I love him. I, you know, I you know I like who he is, and I'm happy he got a shot because we got to see a little bit of him. He just didn't have that have that it factor to him. He just didn't have that to him. You know, he's smaller. Arm strength isn't great. He has some mobility. I don't think he does anything great. I don't think he does anything f- spectacularly well. And I think that's where his downfall plays into it. You know, if you don't have great arm strength, if it's not good, uh, you know, his accuracy isn't perfect, which, you know, he's drafted in the sixth round. I mean, no hit on sixth round. I'm players drafted on the sixth round. I'm not just saying that because he was in the sixth round, but majority of the players drafted that they don't normally turn out, don't normally become the guy. Unless you're Tom Brady, doesn't really happen. Which Gardner Minshew is actually just you know a sixth round quarterback as well. So you know it just goes to show you the difference and you know that maybe being a, an impactful backup, being a third stringer, or you know being on the roster bubble even with the third spot. So the Colts only have three QBs on the active roster, and these three QBs I fully expect to be on the team come the opener playing Jacksonville or Houston. I keep forgetting who they're playing. I think it's Jacksonville, but yeah, this is the quarterback room. I want you guys to give me your opinion on this room. Do you think Anthony Richardson will, should start week one? Do you agree with uh, what I have said? Give me your thoughts in the comment section below. That's what this is all about. So uh, thank you for tuning in. Like I said, if you enjoyed, like, subscribe, join the Discord. We're very active there. Become a member. If you become a member, you get to be more involved in videos. You, you know, you give me your list, what you think about some players, what you think about the topic. So that's all I got for you guys. For you guys, thank you for tuning in to the JD to the W Sports Talk Show. I'll catch you next time.